Hello friends, and we are on what day? I don't even know what day we're on. Anyway, I can't remember the day. All I know is I'm recording on us on Monday, like day 21. And I had a few things in my mind that I thought about this morning that I wanted to talk about, but you know what, I'm gonna, I don't know the name of this video yet, but maybe I'll call this like, but I've already apologized. So pretty much this morning, and it's Monday morning, as you know, record a day after. I have um, stupidly, and I know, don't tell me that I shouldn't have done this. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. However, clearly this post with um, that I posted about um, slavery and reparations and all of that sort of stuff, LinkedIn decided to feature it again today. So therefore, again, I have had more not very nice stuff. So it's, this is not about the not very nice stuff. However, there's been some comments that I, re I did reply to from individuals who are trying to backtrack a little bit. Just a little bit. I, I, I didn't mean that when I said that, Shreen. So there's been a few of that. Probably one in particular probably helped by my very good friend Leanne, who you have seen on previous videos, who felt the need to just hit them with the facts. But I do want to talk about what happens when as white people or non-black people your eyes have been opened and you're because we're now seeing more and more stuff even more stuff than I've said before like pretty much every day somebody is sharing their experiences of you know of being black in the world of being black in the world of work of being black in the media of being black in publishing and being you know all these different places and there's that thing of like oh my god I genuinely I didn't see it I didn't like I saw stuff, but you didn't process like what it actually meant, almost like the subtext. And now you're thinking, shit, like, you know, there's, there's people that I wanna reach out to. There's... And for some people, their conscience has been pricked because they've realized that they, whilst they may say that they weren't racist, and I'm not saying it came from that place, but they probably have not treated black people with the respect and courtesy that they treat their other white friends, colleagues, business acquaintances. That's the point. I'm not saying this is not about a better thing than anybody else. It's just about parity or equity. And so what they're doing is, you know, they've then decided to reach out to whoever and say, oh my God, I like, I'm, can we talk? Because I've reflected on my behavior and I've realized there's some things that I didn't do well or that I didn't do or I wasn't particularly nice about or whatever the case that is. And I'm going to use the example, my mum's not going to mind me sharing this, hey mum, that my mum did a conflict resolution course um, with a very well-known university up in Scotland, because she lives up there. And she has tried and tried and tried and tried and tried to get mediation practice. It's like part of the thing that you do, but you have to get lots of practice and, you know, you do placements and the equivalent of work experience, but on a, clearly on a bit more of a senior level and the university have a lot of things that they can support with and every time she was going to the tutor it was like crickets nothing 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 like she tried you know emailing um, she had seen them at conferences or whatever else it is and they made it clear that they didn't really want to be seen talking to her and particularly you have to remember clearly when you go into certain um, conferences, you know I've spoken about this before, you can still, no matter whether you're in Scotland, even in London, you can still go into an event right and be the only black person. So there are people who genuinely don't want to be seen talking to the only black person. I promise you it happened. Said tutor um, decided to reply to an email that my mum sent to him November 2019 and we are in June 2020. This email was like basically asking questions that are clearly like the answer to the question is immaterial. So anyway, off he trials. Tra -la 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 yeah, here's the thing. Right, let's get to it now. There's a paragraph in the email that basically says, you know, I've seen all this Black Lives Matter stuff and I've been reflecting on my behaviour and I've realised that, you know, there's probably some things that I could have done differently and done di right. There's a difference between reflecting and realising some things that you could have done differently. What I say in the moment. So like if you've done something on Monday and maybe you reflect in like a week, two weeks time, then that counts as, 
I could have done things differently and that's a very different conversation if it takes you six seven months to reflect purely because you've now you've woken up and seen some new information then I'm not saying that you genuinely don't want to make amends what I am saying is don't expect as black people for us to be greeting you with open arms and I always keep saying this is not our job to make you feel better this is what I mean when I say this so there will be um, people who are annoyed and frustrated and angry and the reason why they are in the same way that I have been is because this is not new news we have spoken about this before whether you want to take it from a Black Lives Matter movement point of view or whether you want to look at all the reports into racial injustice all the reports into how to address race in the workplace whatever else it is we have spoken about this before but the business world in particular has chosen not to listen and they have chosen not to listen it's not because they didn't know right they've chosen not to listen leaders have chosen not to do anything about it probably for lots of different reasons but one of which is they don't want to be seen as focusing only on black stuff because it's a small small part particularly if you don't even have that many black people in your business or you don't operate in um, a part of the world pre-coronavirus that had a lot of black people in the community so if you did providing black people did your frontline operational roles you never really questioned too deeply why they were not reflected as you go up and up and up and up the layers within your organization so the point I'm making all of this is that just because you're ready to apologize and to reflect and to see things differently absolutely if you you know if you, if, if you want to have a conversation about what you're doing differently and 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 and, and, and however you reflected I'm not saying don't do that what I'm saying is and actually I'm, I'm saying do it because the fact that it will make you deeply uncomfortable shows your commitment to push through dis the discomfort by doing it in the first place but don't use this as an opportunity for either black people to make you feel better you know because what you're looking for is our um, forgiveness you know and go you know what I know you didn't mean what you're looking for is those words I know you didn't mean it I know I know I know no we're not gonna give you that and the second thing is is that don't be surprised if the door is not open for you to even be able to offer that because in all of this and it's great that everybody is, you know, galvanising now when we're all kind of going, oh my God, we need to do stuff differently, we need to do stuff differently. I have to keep saying this point. As black people, we can't instigate change on our own because we do not have the power to do so. So we are very aware of our position. I am very aware of my position, as I, you know, I've said before, right, that fundamentally, me doing these videos, posting the things I have to say on LinkedIn, doing radio interviews, going to speak to businesses, going to do all of that stuff, is me begging. Because the information is already out there, the stories are already out there. A lot of these businesses already have black people in their businesses, so it just means they haven't been listening to them. There is no new think tank that needs to be created, nothing, even with this stuff. And for some of you, if Black Lives Matter had literally just been a protest of two or three days, you know, oh God, they're in Trafalgar Square again, you know, Jesus, and nobody else has said anything other than that, and then you only left it at the media portrayal of people pulling down statues and the ridiculousness of some of the things that people are doing in the name of Black Lives Matter, because some of those people doing stuff are not even connected to the movement, you would have carried on as business as usual. So... I'm saying this not to make you go, oh, God, what's she saying? Damned if we do and damned if we don't. No, because if you say that, that's telling me that you, again, are making this about you. And all I'm saying is I'm just giving you some context to say that there will be some people who might not be open to what you have to say, or they might not be open to your reflections. They might not be open to your apologies. It doesn't stop you from trying to do it. And it doesn't stop you from, okay, going, that door is closed for now. I am going to commit and I'm going to do X, Y and Z and I'm going to go off and I'm going to carry on reading and I'm going to carry on challenging and I'm going to be better and I'm going to call out. So you're going to carry on doing all of that stuff. But don't use our inability to engage with you on this 
as an excuse not to push through and still do what needs to be done. I think that's basically what I'm saying in a very roundabout way.